Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to my brand new textures collection, Wings and Things. Um, there is an overview on the Craft Stash channel, so you'll be able to see all the items there. There's stamps and there's dies as well. Um, but I want to show you how I've created this particular card. It's kind of a vintage style using a couple of the items from the collection. Now you can browse the entire collection by looking in the description below. I've got a link there to both the UK and the US stores. And if you do like this video, I'd love it if you could give me a quick thumbs up and subscribe, of course, to my channel if you haven't done already. Okay, let's jump straight in. So first things first, I'm going to create a background and this is going to be slightly textured to start with um, so that the insects really show up, not too deep. I might add some li a little bit more later on. I need to add a little bit of colour to this first, a base colour. So I've put my messy mat underneath just to protect my desk. And I'm going to go in with a mix of two different Distress Oxide sprays. So I'm going in with Speckled Egg and with Walnut Stain. Because they're oxides, they're actually quite muted tones, so they look really nice with a bolder stamp over the top. So I'm just shaking these to get all the mica from the bottom, and I'm going to just spritz these over the top just to give that sort of speckled look. As you can see, I don't want anything too smooth. And then over with the blue as well in patches, a little bit darker. And I'm going to go with some water and then start to mix these just like so. The water will also create that oxidization that oxides have and that will make it all lighten up too. Now I'm just going to give that a few seconds to sit on my cardstock and then I'm going to actually lift a lot of that off with some kitchen towel. I've actually got the print of the kitchen towel in there so I will just dab that some more. I don't really want the print in there but you can see we're left with this really lovely quite pale background, nice loose patterns in there, a bit of distressing going on. So I'm just going to dry that off. Now for the most part that is dry, I'm going to stamp a little bit of texture in the background as well. And I'm going to bring in for this, so I like this brick wall stamp, but I'm going to bring this in from the uh, Grungy Dragonfly and Brick Wall Stamp Set. This comes from the same collection, the Wings and Things but I'm just going to use this and I'm only going to use it with my hand and just press into this ink pad. Now this ink pad is black and, oh, do I want to, I think I might actually go with a brown and see, I don't want it too dark. And by using my fingers, I'm not going to be putting too much down at a time. There you go, you can see just a little bit of texture there. I'm going to turn this round, use another part of it. So I tend to sort of use a couple of fingers and almost roll it on. So you get a really light touch. Perfect. There we go. That's probably, I, I'm always going to say this, that's enough and then carry on stamping. I think that is actually yeah. enough. <laughs> Now to go into our stamp platform and to add the first layer of our insect species chart. So just popping that on there. This is a large stamp. You don't have to use all of it. There's some great cards out there where people have masked this off. Um, particularly Monica masked a few off and just did like a bookmark style with them. So I know this is only just going to fit on my paper here. I'm not worried about that though. So just making sure that they magnets are not interfering so I might pop that one there although I've got my sticky grid under there okay so the first time I stamp this I'm actually going to be stamping this in a brown I'm going to go with the brown that's water reactive and you'll see why in a moment and I'm going to press this really quite firmly over all of the bugs now this is a distress oxide and a distress oxide is water reactive not as much as the dyes so i might actually go and reach for my um distress oxide sorry not dyes the inks the dye based inks so let's just put these this on first like so so you can see the background there and then i'm going to take my water again and do a light spritz and just press any remaining ink into there as well and what I'm hoping is that the inks kind of bleed a little bit and run. Let's see, yeah. So we have got a little bit of that happening there. That's great. Again, I'm just going to dry that off. 
Now although we've got a small amount of bleeding on there, I want to see if I can get just a little bit more. So I have gone with the Distress Ink in the same colour, Vintage Photo, believe it or not, they are the same colour. And I'm going to go back over these with that stamp. Wipe the, where I've caught the edge of the stamp there. You don't need to be too precise with this either. At the moment, we we like that kind of loose look. I'm going to dampen here again. Doesn't matter if you're using the right cardstock. You can keep wetting and re-wetting the paper, and it will perform absolutely fine. And now I'm holding that ink in. Hopefully this will spread and bleed a little bit more. Oh, you can see that happening already. That's brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to give that a few seconds. I probably actually might leave this one to air dry this time while I get some things together ready for the next layer. Okay, so I haven't moved my cardstock and I haven't moved my stamp at all. Now I'm going to come in with a solid black and really get the smaller details of these bugs showing through on the cardstock. Now as long as your paper, your cardstock is fully dry, this layer will not bleed and you'll get the nice clear detail. You might need to do a couple of impressions, particularly if you are using a watercolour paper. So let's just press these down really firmly over each of the bugs and the text, making sure again that none of those magnets are in the way. Perfect, there we go, look at that. You've got that darker image, almost like they've kind of, the bugs have sat on old paper for a while and it started to discolour. I really like that. So what I'm going to do now is leave the stamp where it is. I'm going to remove this sheet for now. So just take that out. I'm going to put another clean piece of cardstock in here and I'm just going to do another impression of the insects there, again in black perfect how cool is that even just black on white i really really love this image okay now to tidy this all away since my cardstock is damp anyway i'm going to just add a little bit more of the speckled egg i kind of lost it a little bit in a few places so i'm just going to do some splats of the speckled egg in a few places just really one co bottom corner and top corner and opposite really mostly I might even do my big splats and that's where I take the lid off I just press down on the pump there with the tube out so just in the liquid there a gentle and then ready there nice big splat it actually went directly over one of the bugs so let's try again there that's perfect that's what I wanted a few bigger ones now this will all become clear in a little while. I'm just going to lift off of this bug a little bit more, um, but that should be fine. Okay, so set that aside to dry. And now I'm going to use my fussy cutting scissors and I'm going to cut out the main part from each of these. Now I'm not worried about legs and I'm not worried about antennae because they are going to be black anyway, but certainly the wings and the bodies for each of the bugs I'm, or insects I'm going to be cutting out now. Now all the pieces are cut out, I'm going to lay them over their relevant bugs and put them on. So we've now got sort of the white backgrounds and it just makes each of the bugs stand out a little bit more, sort of pop from the background so they're not as faded in. So just lay that over there. You can see we've got the black legs and the black antennae still, but it, like I said, it just lifts them up and makes them look like they stand out a little more. So just gluing these on completely flat with a wet paper glue. And you can see we've got this nice dark area around each of the bugs as well. How cool is that? Okay, next I'm going to create a semicircle here. I used to have a piece of metal, an embellishment that was like a metal frame. I might see if I can find that. If not, I'll die cut myself a circle. And then I'm going to add to that this dragonfly here. It's a much larger image of this one and it's going to be really cool because it's going to look like it's magnifying that image. So uh, I'm just going to do that first. So just having that circle off there, um, I'm going to then 
just capture a part of this dragonfly so we've got the head and the tail so probably um, just something like this so you can sort of still see what it is but it's definitely enlarged I'm going to stamp this onto white cut it out I am going to do a little bit of cardstock to a similar sort of color to this um, not exactly it doesn't matter as long as it's kind of similar um, and then place that together so now I've got my little sort of magnifying glass. I'm just going to place that, I think, just over there. That looks pretty cool. Just kind of um, just magnifying that area. Um, yeah, I think that looks quite quite smart. And I'm going to add a sentiment to this. So my next stage is, again, something that I'm not going to be able to film, but I'm just going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to do a stitched edge, uh, probably a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge in a black thread so that it really shows up. And then I'll put this onto a card base and decide if I need much more with it. Now on this card, I'd like the background to be the feature as much as anything in the foreground. So I'm not going to put too much else in the way of embellishments on top of this. I really want that stamp, those insects to show through. So just putting this onto a card base, just ensuring that the card base is the right way round. I'm going to leave the threads loose. I often do that as well. Um, and I've also got my magnifying glass as well. So place this down to around about there yeah that looks great now for the sentiment I'd like to keep uh, any embellishment in one place usually I'd try and balance things out um, I really like this those small things make a big difference I think that works perfectly with the background that I've created here so I'm going to cut this out and I'm actually going to probably try to have if it'll fit small things and then it continues down here make a big difference so the sentiment is running that way or vice versa we'll see how it fits best I think the word small things is going to fit perfectly, absolutely perfectly there. So I'm going to snip that. If I just snip it, I want to really snip it to the shape if I can. I might have to tuck it under, in fact, instead. So we'll just go essential. So small things. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Absolutely perfect there. And then there make a big difference yeah love that I'm really pleased with how that looks the fact we've got the sentiment coming down past the magnifying glass as well I'm just going to glue that down again wet glue uh, and then just add any finishing touches I think finishing touches for this is just going to be a few black pearls or gems here just splattered about near the black sentiment so they kind of look a bit like ink splats and I think that will be enough and there we have a really fun vintage card, perfect for all genres, all different ages as well. Um, I'm really pleased with that one. So if you like the look of the Textures Wings and Things collection, there's lots more in the collection that you'll be able to see at Craft Stash. I'll link that down below so you can go and browse all the products and specifically find this stamp set as well. Thank you for watching everybody. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.